Today we need to finish up a project that we had started a couple of videos ago and I uh, just kind of put on the back burner. But when I recently did that review of the Hay Gears Reflex RS Turbo, well, it reminded me it needs to get done. See, when you're printing with PAU11 or PAF10, they smell bad. And the same as ABS or ASA or PA6CF, they release VOCs into the air or UFP. Yeah, we got some technical terms, ultra fine particles, but we need to move those out of the room. That way I can stay in here and not have to wear PPF. Like I don't want to look like Darth Vader just to be in my room because I'm printing some engineering material. Most impressive. So the goal today is to install a inline fan and create some type of box to put on the wall to suck all those VOCs out of the room. Now we're going to cover a few more acronyms and then we'll get to printing. So I kind of did my homework on how much airflow do I really need and that ran across another acronym, ACH, air changes per hour. And I looked at some laboratory standards. So for moving ultrafine particles or VOCs out of an area, they recommend at bare minimum six ACH, ideally between eight and 12 ACH. Now, based off the size of this tiny room, the tiny room advantage, one for once, I don't need a ton of CFM to get that done. The inline duct fan that I found on Amazon claimed to be 290 CFM with a four foot section of flexible hose to a box. I should be seeing about 260 CFM based off the size of my room. That would be 10 air changes per hour or basically sucking all the air out of this room and blowing it out the window every six minutes. This would allow me to stay in the room while printing these stinky materials. Now, do I believe that this inline duct fan is exactly 290 CFM? No. But again, remember we said the minimum is six air changes per hour. And I believe they probably didn't exaggerate that much. So we should be in good shape, but I don't have the tools necessarily to measure the proper CFM. Something I'll pick up later. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the installation of the duct fan. It's four screws and a couple of hose clamps. I'm pretty sure you don't really care about that. So let's jump into CAD and we'll take a look at what I designed and then we'll get it printed out and mounted to the wall. Then we'll be ready to print all the stinky stuff. What we have here is a box. Now, this opening of this box is about the same surface area as the opening of this round six inch circle. That way I don't lose or gain any air velocity, even though this box isn't ideal for airflow necessarily. So I uh, went ahead and printed an adapter because this is for a six inch flex hose. Me kind of future proofing this design later if I move to a six inch inline duct fan and move to a six inch hose, I won't have to reprint this box. So I just printed an adapter that fit on the inside of that and would allow me to hook up to four inch hose temporarily. Of course, that uh, piece has a lot of smoothing. That way the airflow is nice and smooth as it moves through it, even though it's kind of square on the outside. Um, this makes it also much easier to print FDM because no supports would be needed. Let's turn these back on. All right, so I did put a door on the box and I'm not 100% sure it was actually necessary, but anytime I can over-engineer something, I do. So I made the handle and the door itself separate. That way I could print them separately and be able to print that door face down. And you can see on the inside, even though the outside is very square uh, for the printing purpose, making uh, it very easy to print, the inside is very rounded. I really wanted to help that air move through the box and make its way over to the opening as smoothly as possible. So the inside is very curved where the outside was left square. 
went ahead and did some uh, holes for six by two magnets right here. So the door will magnetically connect to the unit. And its print orientation is something like this. And you can see there just a little bit of supports are needed on the bottom. This piece here prints separately. And just a little bit of supports are needed here on the bottom. I felt like the size of the circle was gradual enough that the top wouldn't need supports. So let's jump over into our print and take a look at what we got. I've got it all mounted up and it's actually serving a couple purposes because now it's holding back a bundle of cat six cables that I use for my security cameras, which is kind of nice. I did use a carbon fiber textured plate to print the front door and installed the handle and the magnets in the door. Ran the four inch flex hose down to the inline duct and it looks like we're about done here. I was really surprised at how well this printed. It did take a while, 15 hours for the print in total, but it turned out great. Now, anytime I need to get some smell out of the room, I just hit the power button and off it goes. Because it has a remote means I can store the remote on the other side of the shop and I won't have to walk over. Now you might be asking, why did you mount it there? Like you could have put it on the ceiling or down toward the floor or anywhere. Well. As I was doing my homework, another thing I kind of looked into was the weight of VOCs. Are they lighter than air? Do they tend to rise? Or are they heavier than air? And do they tend to fall? And it turns out that they are kind of buoyant or neutrally buoyant with air. So they don't necessarily rise or fall. They just kind of emanate straight out from their source. I would assume in all directions, but... It made sense to me to put the vent in line with approximately where those VOCs are emanating. So from the X1C or the Hay Gears unit, they're pretty much that vent is right in between the height of both of them. So I felt like that would be a good spot. Now, I could be completely full of shit, but this is just what I found on the internet and I'm sharing it with you. If you choose to and you want to use this box, I'm going to make it available on my website. You can go to extrusiontherapy.com and click on downloads. And this box will be here for you to download and use if you'd like. I will include the 4-inch adapter. That way, if you want to use it with a 4-inch flex hose, you just install the adapter and you're good to go. It does take 6 by 2 millimeter magnets and other than that, some matte PETG or whatever your flavor of material is and you're good to go. All right, guys, would well, you have any questions or if you caught me in something that isn't quite right, by all means, jump in the comments and let me know. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, hit subscribe and tap that little bell. That way you get notifications the next time I upload a video. All right, guys, later.